I want you to see that we should train and teach our young people to have a life of praise and a life of worship. Now, getting into worship in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 3, the Word of God says to receive instructions. That's teaching by discipline in the classroom. To receive wisdom, that's applying concentration to listening and bow down your ears to hear God in his precise word in Proverbs 22 and verse 17. Then the word of God says, and then justice, and that is the results of the finished work, and then judgment, no condemnation, and then equity, the ability to discern God's will and to know him. And then verse 6 says, and to give the simple subtility, which is a very unusual verse in the Hebrew, and as you bring it over in the Septuagint, it means to teach them concentration in the highest form of worship, and simple means those that do not have the Word of God in them. And so you teach them that have no doctrine how to worship God through categories. And that's why the psalmist said in Psalm 119, 171, I will praise thee when thou hast taught me thy statues. Or in Psalm 56, 4, I will worship thy word. As Psalm 106, 12, I'll believe your word and then I'll praise you. And this is the beautiful picture of praising God centering around the word of God. But worship here, a synonym, has two synonyms and two different Hebrew words and it means to be so thankful that Jesus Christ is your God and Savior. He's forgiven you. He's forgiven me. He's cleansed me. That with all the love that I could ever have for him, I worship him in spirit. Not in my soulish flesh, but in the spirit and in emeth, E-M-E-T-H, categorical doctrine. We have such a privilege here at our college with so many wonderful teachers and so many pastors around it teaching and raps. We have such a privilege to learn how to fulfill worship. Is it any wonder worshiping his name, the word of God says in Psalm 48.10, I'll worship him according to his name. I worship him for the help of his countenance in Psalm 42, 5. That means his beautiful meekness, his kindness, his patience, his long-suffering. I will praise him according to those attributes of his countenance which reveal his character because he's meek and lowly. Genesis 22 and verse 5. Here is Abraham ready to offer Isaac. And what does he do? He's going to offer his son, but he worships God first. What is he doing? Worshiping God's character. He's trusting in him to provide either resuscitation or, or, or another substitute as God did. But he worshiped him. And the word of God says so beautifully that the servant that went to get the bride for Isaac in 24, 26, he said, in verse 27 and 26, he said, I am in the plan and will of God in the application. I am in the way of God. He's leading me. And he said, as I travel with God leading me, I want to worship the Most High, the God of Abraham. And then he said it. He did it again in verse 52 of Genesis 26. Well, it is so important. They worshipped him and they were glad in Second Chronicles 22, 23. And they were glad. It was something that made them glad. If you will understand with me tonight that the secret of the Lord is in them that fear him. Them that reverence his presence. So they praise him for what he's done and they worship him for who he is, which is revealed in the scriptures that reveal his mind. 
So we worship him in Psalm 148 for what he's done and all of his creation. And then the next time we worship him for who he is. Lord and Savior, Lord over death and Lord over hell and Lord over disease and Lord over everything that we've ever done against him. And so we learn this great principle, la truo, and the Septuagint brings it out. It means to hear his words and worship his character, said the Septuagint. And then we have a beautiful verse in Psalm 29 and verse 2. Give unto him that that is due him his glory and worship in the beauty of his holiness. Give unto the Lord the glory due him and worship in the beauty. And the word beauty means in the manifestation of the resurrection ascended life to us today and worship him in the beauty of holiness. And holiness means to be separated unto his thinking, to be separated unto his mind, to be separated unto the way he thinks about every subject. And that's what it means. And it's a beautiful passage. So we give the glory due the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, worshiping God, we worship him in song, we worship him by adoring him. We worship him for who he is. But worship, never forget it in Proverbs 1 6, is to worship him with concentration and reverence and godly fear for what he says to us and receiving it with meekness and faith responding. And that's what it means.